Hey everybody, welcome back for another Nightworks. This is Art Explorations with Graphite Ink and Watercolor. Um, here I'm doing the initial pencil drawing. Um, this is a seasonal piece, Thanksgiving just happened, and I like doing little uh, responsive works to things that are going on around me. Um, this is a guy who's supposed to loosely have a pie face. Um, my friend Jenny requested I do people made of pie or something. I don't know. Anyway, so I tried this. I think I could have upped the pie-ness of the guy, but it, it came out fun anyway, regardless. And here's Mr. Pie number two. And this is all just stuff I'm making out of my head. I call it I'm just free balling, just making up stuff as I'm drawing. I had a loose idea of the first guy. And then I had the inspiration to add Mr. Pie number two, the second guy. And, um, that gave me kind of a back and forth of up and down and two different directions of pie people. And then as I was drawing, because I'm doing this piece about Thanksgiving, I started thinking about um, gluttony and how we tend to overeat on these holidays. And so then I got the idea to just put his main mouth food hole right in the middle of his body he's got a big uh, mouth in his stomach just shove the food straight into his fat stomach so and then I was like well since he's eating I'm gonna give him a little spoon and then I don't know why they're I guess they're naked because I'm sort of loosely thinking about uh, the souls in Dante's Inferno the gluttons and so then I started thinking oh these are gluttons right so sure. I'm not saying these are damned people so why would they have a pie face but those are the pieces of ideas that I slapped together for this piece this guy's got a little fork just some eating utensils and I'm just playing around with ideas on how they'd be standing as they're waddling around looking for more food to eat. And just coming in and reinforcing the idea for the hand and the arms. And here I'm just adding in the crotch and the legs. And then in the back I add a foot to the guy, like he's lurching forward. Give him some ears. Tongue sticking out. Just grab something round so I could put in like a moon, and then I put in some fat stars. I don't know, you know, just eating all night long. Okay, whoo, I did the drawing. Now I'm onto the watercolor. For this piece, I'm using, uh, is it schmanky watercolors? Is that even a word? I should look that up. So yeah, Schmanky. I don't know how you pronounce it. I believe they're German, Yiddish. I don't. I don't know. These are professional grade watercolors. I got them on Amazon. I'll put a link down below if you want to click on it. Um, this is the kind of watercolor that has more pigmentation um, than the stuff I normally use. Um, one of the differences 
is it activates to water quicker. I think cheaper watercolors, you really have to get some water on them and squish them around. And this stuff becomes pretty juicy pretty quick. Um, and you know, bright pigments, responsive, quick. And I'm just, I'm kind of being loose. I'm not using any official proper watercolor technique. So if you're a watercolor enthusiast, just, you know, I relax. I know I'm not doing all the stuff you're supposed to do. I have a background in illustration, but I also have an extensive background in contemporary art. And sometimes I just like to work in the moment not thinking about proper technique. I'm just sort of using a self-made techniques. Um, the background is splotchy because I like that look. I think it adds a little chaotic motion, which is what I was looking for for the piece. If I wanted it to be smooth, I needed to take my time and really push a little puddle of watercolor around to get it spread evenly and um, have my brush nice and soaked. Um, I could have pre-wet the background. That also sometimes helps smooth it out, but I don't know. I just like the, I like the kind of patchwork look that you get. I think some people call it cauliflowering or something. I don't know. I don't, I don't really care. And so here I'm coloring the two gluttons and my inspiration for their skin tone was pumpkin pie because they're pie face people. And then um, that also gave them kind of a pseudo flesh tone. Like they're, they've been in a spray tan booth. Uh, so here I'm just enhancing oranges. Gotta get his crotch nice and orange. Getting his nose a little more red, like an alcoholic. And tongue inside of the Double mouth. Using a nice little, I think it's a number six round brush. Held its tip really good. I just got that. I don't remember when. I never, this might be the first, second time I've used it. It's a cool little brush. Me mixing stuff in this little travel kit I made so. Hopefully you guys can sort of see what I'm doing. If you want me to do a slower, instead of this kind of speeding on crank kind of video, I can slow, do a slower mixing one too. Um, sometimes you come in with a preconceived notion of your color palette and your colors. This one, I was just kind of working off the idea of pie. So my color palette was dessert. And once I kind of knew what the high people were vaguely going to look like. I did a background that kind of corresponded. So they're kind of yellow orange. So the background is kind of blue purple, kind of complimentary ish. And then I had to make sure that the background and the figures didn't blend too much. So they get lost. So I want to make sure that they were different. And then I also had to make sure that, uh, I did, some color separation between figure in the foreground and figure in the background. Knowing though that I was gonna ink it so it wasn't quite as important as if this was straight up paint because uh, they're a little too close if I left it like this. So here I'm adding shadow tones. Putting in purples for the guy in the front and then the guy in the back I was using kind of muddied up blues just to see if the different shadow effects separated them as well. Purple, purple. I start off kind of mild and then I build intensity with color as I go. I didn't want to start off super intense because then I'd have nowhere else to go if I just use straight purple at the beginning. So I try and use softer muted tones, desaturated tones. And then I'll come back in and add more color to key spots where I want. I 
Man, I wish I could paint this fast in real life. I think this paint, this piece took like over an hour. It's like an hour and a half, maybe. Working on Canson XL watercolor paper, 140 pounds, uh, cold pressed. It's not the lumpiest cold press, but it's not it's not bellum hot press smooth or anything. Here I'm just throwing in some purples in the background, hoping they kind of tie in a little bit with the purple in the shadows on the foreground figure. Just trying to key some colors together. I don't know if saying key is the right word, but I'm trying to tie things together so they kind of relate visually. Ridge. It's like the edge of the pie. It's got that crimping. And putting some brighter yellows on all the solar object or the uh, night sky stuff. Not solar. <clears throat> it's like a moon and stars. I wanted them to pop. Um, so this is, you know. It's metaphor, it's satire, it's allegorical piece about gluttony and all that stuff. Uh, consumerism, you could say. I think people eat all over the world though, so it's kind of universal. Yeah, and here are these new pens I'm gonna try, these Ohuhu uh, like ink pens. And I thought these things were great. I really enjoyed using them. I hope they last a while. I'll keep drawing with them and see how long they go. Uh, but they were nice and smooth, and the big fat pen was easy to use. It felt good. Oh, who, who's a company? I think they're from Hawaii. I don't, I'm not sure. They do um, a bunch of alcohol markers and watercolor markers and acrylic markers and some other stuff. They make some brushes. Um, I'm curious about their other. They make brushes? Maybe they don't make the brushes, but I know they make a bunch of different pens and markers. Um, and I was curious about the Ohuhu markers. I have some, a couple of Copic markers, thanks to um, not some nice people donated to me, gives a gift, gifted to me. Um, <clears throat> and I'm not very proficient with them. I don't know what to do with them, really. I gotta practice. But so here I'm just inking, just going over all the pencil work. Um, as I'm doing this, I'm thinking maybe loosely of line weight, variation, variation line weight. I'm definitely thinking of keeping this guy's line work thicker than the guy behind him. And I'm doing some hatching just on edges to help give a little weight to things. And see, when I'm inking like that, hand pops more because I inked it. If I wasn't going to ink it, I would have had to have picked uh, more contrasty colors and tones to make the thumb pop off the forearm there. But since I knew I was gonna ink it, I wasn't worrying about that too much. And so I switched to a smaller pen for this guy. I don't remember which one, but fatter in the front, smaller pen size in the back. Teeth, I get the teeth in. And then I probably used it for the small pens for small hatching. Um, come back and just do little finer line work all over the place. Add some um, line variation, some visual textural variation that uh, enhances a piece.
and see, I just sort of plop star shapes down and then there's that loose glow of the leady yellows around them that's kind of cool. This is that loose watercolor stuff. And so here I'm just finishing up real quick with some uh, Faber-Castell gray tone markers for some shadow enhancement. And I think I even tried to use a little white uh, jelly roll pens, but the white didn't really work too good on this. They're kind of hit or miss. But these things are, are good. I, I like these little gray pens just to add a little quick pops of depth. They're fun. They come in different color tones. And so there you have it. It's a full piece. And I hope you guys enjoyed the process. Thank you and uh, see you next time. Bye.